let us come to the summary of concepts of object oriented programming the revision the summary what we have learned in last few days so the first thing we have learned about the object oriented programming is class and object so uh, have you learned about the object oriented programming what is object oriented programming so there are various types of programming methods object oriented programming is one of them and it is a most essential feature of c++ programming okay so object oriented programming deals with object and class so uh, the object oriented programming are having many types of the features like data abstraction data hiding data encapsulation and using of class and object is also a feature for the, for the object oriented programming and the uh, data abstraction modularity inheritance and polymorphism these types of feature you will get in the object oriented programming so how you can create an object and how you can declare that so for creating an object you have to just write the name name of the class class a if there is declared and uh, you have to create an object then you have to write the name of the class a and uh, you have to write any types of variable like i and by the dot operator you can call the function the data members inside the class a or in outside the class a so i dot b if there is written b here like int b then you can call it by using the dot operator and the using this object which is created with the help of the name of class so this is how you can create an object and this is how you can write a class this is name of the uh, class and before that you have to write class this is a uh, concept how you can write a class name and how you can create an object so let us come to the point where how you can create a function inside a class or how you can declare how you can define function outside the class for inside the class let me read it let us be class a and inside the class you have to declare some uh, void p named function in which you have to write some uh, data inside that and this one is the declaration of function inside the class and if you have to write if you have to declare it outside the class then you just have to call it uh, from somewhere and declare it outside the class by using the name of the class okay the name of the class how you can uh, write this by name of the class and before that you have to write the type of the return means you have to write void int or anything and name of the class after that you have to write scope resolution operator this is called scope resolution operator and after that you have to write the name of function function name is just p and this one is the declaration outside the class declaration of a function outside the class now the next topic we have learned is constructor and destructor constructor and destructor what are they they are the special member function a special member function for the class if you have to in a slice some values inside the class then without a uh, uh, constructor and without a, de a destructor you can't create any types of uh, you can't in a slice any types of value inside a class outside the class you can declare but inside the class you can't declare any types of values you can't initialize any types of values declare you can declare any types of values but you can't initialize the values so for initializing the value you have to create in class like i have created class x and uh, inside that class you have to create an constructor and inside the constructor you can initialize the value like this this is a constructor inside the class this is a constructor inside a class and the constructor outside the class will be the name of the class the name of the constructor and before that scope resolution operator remember that the destructor and the constructor both have no return type means here no voids no int no double no long any types of return type will be not declared here because it is called uh, immediately when a class when a class x it is called immediately when an object of class x is created inside the void main this is void main and the object of x class x object let it be s1 when s1 is created then directly it will be called 
so this one is uh, inside the class and this one is outside the class and the, the s1 will be directly called and if you have to pass the arguments if you have to pass the arguments and if you have to write int i here and you have to pass arguments so you can write s1 dot x and you can pass any types of argument to fulfill the requirement of the constructor here so this is the constructor and this is uh, outside the class this is inside the class if you have to write a destructor how you can write a destructor you just have to write a tilde sign before that and if you have to write the tilde sign before that it, it will hold the body will be turned to the destructor what is destructor constructor that constructor constructor that construct means constructor that initialize the value destructor that destroys the value that um, ends the value the next topic we have learned is inheritance inheritance of datas inheritance of member function inheritance of datas inheritance of member functions inside two types of class if there is class a and class b then we have to inherit some uh, functions we have to inherit some uh, values we have to inherit some uh, member functions member uh, data members to that b why we use this we use this because of reusing of the datas inside a class A, inside a class B if you have to declare another class C and saving it, it saves the time, okay. It uh, creates us, it creates us the situation where we can hide the datas, datas hiding means by using private we can hide the data inside the uh, class. If you have uh, written a private and we have declared some uh, members we have to we have declared some functions then that function will not be accessible from the class b uh, so, and uh, the transitivity transitivity means if we have written here int a and it is in public then all the members b c every class members can use this int a so this is called transitivity okay so there are many uh, type of inheritance that is single inheritance multiple multi-level hierarchical hybrid okay so let us know what are they uh, i will only write the structure uh, i will not write every types of uh, example for that okay so for single inheritance you have to write a and b this is the single inheritance where you have to create a class a and that uh, class a will be inherited from class b by using this structure this is class b inherited by class A, this is single inheritance. For multiple inheritance, you have many class A, B, C, and all the class is inherited with D. This is multiple inheritance. For multi level inheritance, you have the class A, you have the class B, you have the class C. This is multi level inheritance. For hierarchical inheritance, you have class A, you have class B, you have class C, you have class D. It is multi level, uh, sorry, hierarchical inheritance. For hybrid inheritance, you have class A, you have class B, you have class C, and you have class D. A, e, uh, B is uh, inherited with A, D is inherited with A and C is inherited with both B and D.